The New Reality, a look at the future of mobile technology with your host, John Romero. Hello and welcome to another episode of the ARM New Reality series. Today we're going to look at how our mobile devices can put a digital layer over reality. We're going to talk with someone who is using real-time 3D to bring architectural models into real life. But first, let's take a look at his work. My name is Adam Chernick. I'm the Director of Interactive Visualization at Shop Architects and I lead a small team that builds custom augmented and virtual reality applications to solve a range of different use cases in architecture, engineering, and construction. We are currently in a room that we call Tranquility, which is our virtual reality cave. We're using AR and VR in a bunch of different ways, figuring out how to leverage augmented reality in order to look at our buildings in a construction site before they're built. In order to do that, we're building an application which is using Unity Reflect. Depending on where you're standing, it, it turns the construction site into an interactive experience. So we are able to select a wall instead of opening up a, a set of potentially hundreds of drawings and navigating to where that wall is and then cross-referencing that drawing. We're actually able to click that wall and instantly obtain all of the necessary drawings. The processing for the augmented reality is all happening uh, locally on the device. We are doing everything in our power to make these massive, massive complex models able to be run on mobile devices. What's been wonderful year after year as these devices get more and more powerful is we can throw more and more uh, geometry and complexity at these devices. Without a smooth user experience, we are not going to gain adoption. And that's really the name of the game here. It needs to be easier, it needs to be more intuitive, it needs to be faster, they need to be able to do their work in less time in order for adoption to happen, and user experience is key for that. We've used real-time engines uh, kind of across the, the board with 9 to Cobb. We've used them in the design process, and we've also used photogrammetry scanning on the construction site. Right now during COVID, it's very difficult to get people onto the construction site. We can actually bring the construction site to their living room using these different scanning methods. Um, and so we've, we've really used uh, a wide range of uh, AR and VR technologies on this project. Yeah, my dream for the future, which you know I really think is going to happen, is there's going to be a, an augmented reality headset that is lightweight that we're going to be able to use in our day-to-day -day lives. And what that's going to enable is a fully digital layer on top of our lives in every aspect. The future of augmented and virtual reality is mobile. With me is Adam Chernick, Director of Interactive Visualization at Shop Architects. That VR cave looked pretty cool. Is that is that like a layout of the office, of your own office there? Um, I think what you saw in the VR cave was actually a movement simulation that we've been working on. Is um, we've been using this cave as a design validation tool. So we're, uh, we're using um, Unity and some custom programming to run simulations to see how humans are gonna interact with our buildings once they're built. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty nice that you're using Unity because as everyone knows, Unity was built as a, as, a, as a commercial game engine to build game experiences in. But because it's such a powerful tool, uh, it can do so much more than just make games, you know? So um, how has your experience been using Unity in a non-game context? My experience has been great. Uh, I mean, I love it, right? It's so fun. It's a sandbox. It's a, it, it, it's, there's no rules. It's, it, you know, there's, it, it's an environment that you can do whatever you want, right? We have an idea where we want to toggle through design options. We can do that. And then we have an idea where we want to connect into a, some other software infrastructure and we can do that and we can connect these dots that weren't previously available uh, to, to connect, which is very exciting. Well, the, the graphics processing that you're doing with the slicing and with the, uh, the sun and all that cool stuff, that's local, 
uh, done by Unity, but you had to do some special stuff to get that slicing to work, right? Yeah, absolutely. So to get our section cuts where we're able to slice through a model and uh, change the solar path based on the geolocation uh, of the site. Um, yeah, a lot of that is um, custom. We're using some tools that we have found online and some of them are from Unity and some of them are from other people within the community and then we kind of, um, you know, massage them to, uh, to what we need. So these mobile devices that your app runs on have, uh, has technology like cameras, accelerometers and everything. Like how does your app use uh, all the stuff that's built into mobile devices? Yeah, we're using the cameras and sensors uh, in, a, in a whole bunch of different ways in our applications. The first one that I can think of is for augmented reality itself. We're using that camera to um, you know, look at the environment and find vertical planes and horizontal planes for these different ways of uh, dropping the digital environment on top of the physical and doing all that computation. Um, you know, it all, it all funnels through that camera. Uh, and then we're really excited for, you know, LiDAR built into <laughs> mobile devices and being able to understand the world and scan the world um, is really going to, you know, again, um, up that immersion, up that uh, that uh, gray. It's going to create the, this gray area between the digital and the physical, which is very exciting. Yeah, the scanning, the room scanning with LiDAR definitely uh, is taking what was done in software originally using cameras and doing that in hardware and making it way faster, which means you could do even cooler stuff that we haven't thought of yet. Absolutely, yeah. I mean... Tons of new opportunities there, but then just even that faster that you mentioned is so important because, you know, right now there are little artifacts. If, you know, if you're a first time user in augmented reality, you need to kind of understand how to find a, a surface correctly. And if you don't find it correctly, then there can be drift. Your model can kind of float off into space, which is, you know, a, a difficult one from a user, expe uh, user experience perspective. But uh, but with, with LiDAR, with these new technologies where, no, we know that's a, you know, you instantly understand that that's a plane, um, it, 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 it's going to get rid of a lot of those edge cases, uh, that we see. I have the app here, um, the shop app and I'm in the, uh, I think I'm in the orbital. So there's a few different ways that you can look at models in this application. So if you click into, you're going to look at the 90 called tower that we've been talking about in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and there's a few different ways you can look at the, uh, at the project. There is an orbit mode where you can spin around it with your thumb. There's a tabletop AR mode where you can drop it on a table or drop it on your floor and rotate and scale and, and look at this uh, model in that new intuitive way. And then there's also a street view AR mode that you can look up at the building in one-to-one -one scale. So you can actually um, drop the building around you. If you go to a park, if you go to the construction site itself, you can drop the building in place and, and see what the building's going to look like uh, within context, which is pretty exciting. And so what this app is actually enabling is we figured out how to scale that technology now. So we can actually, every single project we have in there, I think right now, um, behind the scenes, we have 20 or 25 of our projects in this application. Um, we're able to wow. get Street View AR uh, in one-to-one -one scale, we're able to get live new models and new data uh, into into these um, into these projects in a seamless way. Yeah, that's really 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 cool. And the um, to see the tabletop AR, where I basically say, "Here I am. Here's my yeah. desk, and I'm going to tap right here." Yeah. And there it is. You know, you can see the building. You can move the device into the side of the building to see the, the slice of any floors, like multiple floors at the same time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's really cool how you can just see what's going on, like what's, what's going on on every single floor of this building. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's really fun. It's kind of an exciting new uh, way to view 3D information, right? It's relatively intuitive. It's fun. It's interactive. Um, we love the, the tabletop mode and then we're building in the functionality into all these different modes as well. So you'll still see that heartbeat button on the top right. So you can actually turn on that live construction data 
in AR as well. Okay, here we are, live construction data. Yep, yeah, while you're looking at it. Yeah. I like how you can shrink it. You can pitch to, pinch to zoom the scale of the entire thing as well so you can see it better. That's actually getting a live data feed from our construction administration team on the construction site. And so anybody with this application is then able to watch this building get built live from in their pocket from anywhere on earth. The idea of, of what you've created here um, is inspirational for people who are thinking of what kind of practical AR projects could I put together? And here's this amazing project that's used in a very highly critical, valuable process of building a giant, very expensive building. And um, in, in taking that idea, and like maybe, you know, there, I'm sure that there's just a world of uses for this stuff. So thanks for showing us your, your awesome code. Yeah, no problem. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, I, you know, love to get on here and nerd out with you guys. So uh, I appreciate it and we'll talk soon.